So hello and welcome to this video. This video is about dingle dangles. I uploaded four or five videos about these and in the mayhem this video got lost and was never uploaded. And it is the braid dingle dangle, right? And this video is here to correct that. I will link all the other videos about the dingle dangles in the description. So let's get going. So what are the benefits of using a dingle dangle? The benefits are you can fish with circle hooks or J hooks and you will deep hook the fish less often. You can also cast big baits further because the geometry of the bait has changed. If you want to see what that's like, just watch my videos. I use them a lot in the bait videos, especially for cod and halibut. Check out the Otterson videos. I link one in the description. You see it in there in use. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the components that you're going to need to make this, right? First of all, you're going to need some 100 pound braid. You can go over, but I don't recommend going under. Secondly, you will need two 10 mil beads. You will need some four mil plastic tubing. Silicone tubing is softer than this. And when you cut the bait off the dingle dangle, which is quicker than using your fingers, sometimes you'll cut through the braid core and you'll be miserable and you'll have to start again or get another one out. This is a good thing about this. Take another one out of your box. Most people just tie them onto the hook and they stuck, stick a piece of foam on behind it to bind the bait to. But with this system, you don't need to do that. The plastic tubing gives you a base to build on. Okay. A lot of people add float to their dingle dangles to make the bait lift up off the, off the sea floor. You could just use this, right? A lot of people use polystyrene, but it leaves pieces in the water. It's just messy and I don't like it. So I use this, this is window insulation foam. It's got a hole in the middle of it. And so what I do is I cut a section to fit the dingle dangle. You don't need very much to lift the bait, hardly any at all. This will lift quite a big bait. To see whether or not it's floating straight up in the water away from the sea floor where it's absolutely useless, you just put it into a bucket of water or a, a rock pool or whatever you got going. So you just cut down to the hole in the middle. Like so, and then you just apply it to the dingle dangle. Okay, and then you build your bait on that, right? Just whip it onto that and then it will lift your bait up. So that's what I use, works very effectively. It's not always conducive to every fishing condition, but sometimes it comes in handy if you've got a problem with crabs or whatever. So what else do we need to build this? Up the top, you need some type of ring, right? And this goes on the hook like this. It's to stop the hook from coming off. And this size here is 7.6 millimeter. That's the ID interior diameter, okay? And it will fit every hook smaller than this one, okay? And this is a 10-0 demon circle heavy, okay? On the top is heat shrink tube. That's it right there. You can find it on the internet. It doesn't have to be clear. It can be whatever color you like. I like clear because I can see the hook point. It makes life a little bit easier. The heat shrink tube is nine mil. Okay. But it works like this. Okay. And it stops that dingle dangle from slipping off the hook when you cast it or it's rolling around the sea floor. So that's it. And the reason why I favor this way over tying them on the hook is if your fishing circumstances change and there's a fish in your swim with teeth you could just take this one off and replace it with a one that has wire if you need if you need to change it for any of the the different examples that are got you that you'll see in the videos linked in the description you just have to take it off and put it back on again just like that okay and if the heat shrink tube is damaged you just take another piece that you'll have in your tackle box and a lighter and you just replace it okay but i have loads so i just take out a spare one if i need to go back again so that's why i fish it this way okay if you're going to be doing this yourself and you don't want to go down the route of using swivels and split rings the split ring will go on the end like this and the swivel will go on the top you can buy these these are assist hook jigging rings you can find them on the internet. They come in packs of 50 or 100. They're cheap. And I buy these a lot to make assist hooks for, for my jigs. And instead of using loads of these, I have designed this one myself. And I make them out of 
hardened stainless steel. It saves me a lot of money. Okay, big packet of them there. And the shape is, is better than just the ring itself. Okay, so if you start designing stuff yourself, you can add your little flair to it. Stuff that you think will work better. Okay, other than that, you could just put a small one of these up the top and a big one down the bottom or two of the same size, depending on what you want. So we'll start with the build. So first of all, you will need about 25 to 30 centimeters of braid. And then you tie it on to the bottom ring. And the key to this is the knot that I'm gonna use. And it's not a complicated one. In fact, it's a very simple one. And it's just two overhand knots. Couldn't get any easier than that. Tighten it down. Now it's not gonna move. You will need a pair of scissors, some hook pulling tools, and some super glue. The super glue is definitely optional. I like it. Adds a little piece of security to the whole arrangement, okay? just to make sure that knot does not slip. Right, so now before the glue dries, actually, it's not necessary, but I just do it this way anyway, you put your first bead on, okay? First 10 mil bead going on, you pull it down over the knot. If you can, it helps protect it. If not, don't worry about it. Then you cut seven centimeters of tubing. Why seven centimeters of tubing? because I've been making these for years and I have figured out that this is the best all round size for this side of the world, for like taupe, horse, uh, smooth hounds, rays, whatever you got, okay? Cod is <laughs> the best. So seven centimeters, half, it could be six and a half, but in and around, okay? So then you take this and you slide it down onto your core. Then you take your second 10 mil bead. You put that down. We are almost done, right? Then you take the jigging ring, which is, you know, it's the best option for the top. I suppose you could just, you could actually just tie that straight onto the hook if you wanted, right? With the same system, if you don't want to buy these. And that's up to you. But like I said, I like to be able to change them. It gives you options. Options is always good. Right? It saves you time, catches your fish, anything that's quicker. You know what I mean? So then you take your jigging ring, okay, 7.6 mil. You could use a washer if you can't get these as well. You know, they're strong enough, they'll support it during the cast as well. So you just put another granny knot. Right there. Now, the whole trick with this is, if you use an ordinary fishing knot, then when you open it, there's so much slack in it that this dingle dangle becomes practically unusable because it's flopping around the place and it doesn't hold the bait properly. The plastic has to be the same size as the gap between the beads, otherwise it's gonna flop around the place. And the way you do that is, you take a hook puller like this, you put it on the jigging ring, then you, you take this bit of braid here and you pull. Okay? Now, that's about as much as I would do it. Just like a shallow sea, okay? Yes? Now you can let go, right? And it's not going anywhere. So you just do the same thing again. You put another overhand knot right on top of the one that you just tied and you make sure that it goes into the right place so when you open it it doesn't give you more slack than you needed okay here comes the last part well almost the last part you take your hook pullers or your hooks or whatever you can get your hands on and you just pull the slack out of this there you go it's gone Now the knots are tightened, there's no gap 
between the beads and the plastic which is important actually because if it's all floppy and there's a gap there it's hard to work with and you take your glue and you put another drop of glue just there just to secure that you go now you take your heat shrink tube and you cut a piece that will suit the size of the jig and ring up the top okay there you go now this is a blowtorch lighter for just i don't actually know the name of it but like it's like a burner right and if you don't have one of these don't use a normal lighter it will burn everything else as well so if you don't have one of these just use the steam off the kettle or some boiling water that's it there cut the top of it and you're done there you go i make a lot of links clips and tools for fishing stuff like this okay and stuff like this and it's all made out of stainless steel hardened stainless steel i'm going to do a video on how to make these fly tying bobbins in the future i use these for making assist hooks i use these for repairing fishing rods the whipping on them and stuff like that that way you don't need any of this expensive tackle um you just do it on the back of chairs you put the rod on the back of the chairs and this is like a third hand also for when you're tying assists i'm also going to do a new video on assists a lot of these videos i've taken down but I'm going to redo them because I found a better way to do it. So that's it from me. I hope this makes your life easier. I hope it makes it cheaper. I hope it catches you more fish. I hope you liked it. Wherever you are in the world, remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.